Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In the past, I've done videos demonstrating Sharpen AI on a landscape image, on a macro image, on several different wildlife images, but I've never done a video demonstrating how well Sharpen AI might work on an image with people in it, of a portrait. Recently, I was on the website unsplash.com, that is a stock photo website, and I stumbled across this nice image of these two women. And if you look closely at it though, it's a bit soft. The woman on the left is pretty much out of focus, and the woman on the right is just a little bit out of focus. And I was wondering, how well would Sharpen AI work on an image like this? And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now obviously I have the image in Lightroom. I have it in Lightroom so I could compare the two more easily, the before and after. I didn't do anything on this image at all. It is totally unprocessed as far as I am concerned. It was just downloaded as is from unsplash.com. So I'm going to send it into Sharpen AI. I'm just going to right click right on the image. We're gonna go down to Edit In and then over and down to Topaz Sharpen AI. Um, I'll send a copy with Lightroom adjustments even though I didn't do any adjustments at all. And then, you know, with the default settings here, TIFF, Photo RGB, Pro Photo RGB, and so on. And we'll click Edit. And Lightroom is now creating that TIFF file, and it will open it up into Sharpen AI. Now, for those of you not familiar with Sharpen AI, um, it has a lot of different Sharpen models. These are different ways it will go about sharpening an image. And they're meant for certain types of problems. For example, there's one model that's meant for motion blur, another model meant for just being out of focus, a third model meant for it being too soft, and then there's like sub models with those models, meaning a motion blur normal, motion blur very noisy, motion blur very blurry. So you could kind of narrow down exactly um, the type of problem you have and what model would it you know, fix it properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to go to this drop down and zoom to 50% so we can see the faces of both of the women. Now whenever you do that, you have to let the models update. And you can see the standard model is now updating. And over here, the motion blur, very blurry model is update and so on. I'm in what is called comparison view. If you go up into the different views here, you can see there's single view, split view, side by side view and comparison view. I like to start out in comparison view because I could compare four of the models at one time to one another. And the way I have it set up, I have the standard model in the far left. Um, next to that, to the right, I have the motion blur, very blurry model. Lower left, I have autofocus, very blurry. And then the lower right, too soft, very blurry. And then I look at these and see which one of these might look best. And to me, the out of focus, very blurry looks best. And you can see that I have the settings for that model set to auto. So Topaz Lab Sharpen AI will look at the image and determine uh, how much remove blur should be applied and how much suppressed noise should be applied. So it'll automatically do that. I like to do that with all of these. They all, well, this one isn't. I'll put that on auto. That way I'm comparing, um, in my mind, I'm comparing apples to apples. All four of these models are on auto, and I could get a better idea of whether or not one is better than the other. Now, motion blur, very blur, I don't have on auto. I'll put that on auto as well. And then this one was on auto. And then too soft, very blurry is on auto as well. And then now, with all four of these being on auto, it still looks like the autofocus, very blurry, is the best. Now, if this is too confusing to you and they all look very similar. You do have the option of going to single view mode. And then over here, you could just click this automatic bot button and it will automatically choose what model it thinks is the best model for your image. I've had bad luck with this. I Overall, I've never found this to pick the model that I thought was best. That's why I might give it a try here or there. Like, for example, it's picking the Sharpen model as the best model, and that wasn't. It just wasn't. So I prefer to be in comparison view and then pick the best model this way. So I liked autofocus, very blurry. So I'll click on that and make that active. And you can tell it's active because it has a blue outline in the lower left-hand corner. 
Then what I'll do is I'll go into a uh, single view mode, right? And then you could zoom in a little more here, maybe. Something like that with that slider. So at 86%. Now you have to wait for it to render. Whenever you move the image around or if you move the navigator window or if you zoom in or zoom out, you have to wait for it to re-render. Now I'm looking at it and it looks pretty good. Now you could get a before after. The easiest way is just click right on the image. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. To me, that looks pretty good. Now I could try, since out of focus seemed like the best one, I'd stay with out of focus and might try like out of focus very noisy. I don't think there was any discernible noise in this image. And you could see it's updating still. You have to wait for that to update. And that doesn't look as good. Out of focus normal, let that update. And then get an idea. Now, if I wasn't doing a video, I probably wouldn't even do this. I was satisfied with autofocus, very blurry. And that looked to be the best. So still does. Now, if I felt the need, I could try to maybe uh, remove a little more blur if I found I needed to. Or if there was noise in the image, move the suppressed noise to the right. Also, if there were other things in the scene that you don't want sharpened, you only want the subject of the image sharpened, you could go to select and turn this on and what it will do, it will automatically look for the subject of the image and you could see in the mask it did. Wherever white is, is being sharpened and wherever black is, isn't being sharpened. So this works very well. Um, so if you, again, in this case, the, the background not only is blurry, it's all blown out. So there's no need to use this, but I want to make you aware of that because quite often we don't want to sharpen a blurred background. We just want to sharpen the subject of the image whether or not it's a person a butterfly or you know a vase we want to sharpen that we don't want to sharpen the blurred out background so that would work as well and some finally sometimes if you add a little grain to an image it will give it the illusion of being sharper than it actually is um, I almost never do that as a matter of fact I don't think I've ever done that so I like out of focus very blurry I think that looks good and it will click apply and when I click apply, it'll do that uh, to that image and bring us back into Lightroom. Now, when we get back into Lightroom, one of three things is, are going to happen. It's going to be perfect. We're going to look at it. It looks great. Or there's going to be a little error type message down here in the film strip or in the film strip. Let me make this bigger. There'll be like a little up arrow thing here and it will looking like it doesn't look right. And you know, then you have to click on that and you'll have three choices. Pick the middle choice. I can't remember what it says, but if you see three lines, a little up arrow, click on that, pick on the middle choice, and then it will be fine. Or this will happen, and I'm glad it happened. It doesn't look any different. If we go to the before, there's the original image and there's our image, and it doesn't really look any different. I found this happen now and then with various plugins in Lightroom, not just Sharpen AI and not just Topaz Labs uh, plugins. With this specific update of Lightroom Classic, this is I think uh, 11.3, um, I found this happen. What you got to do to get the actual sharpened image back is to close down Lightroom and then reopen it. And sometimes you get an error and I did, I got an error. So just reopen Lightroom. And like I said, this isn't a problem with Topaz Lab software. This is a Lightroom problem. And I haven't yet, but I'm going to submit a bug report to Adobe on this. Uh, so there is our sharpened image. There's the before image. And there's our sharpened image. Let's zoom in on this lady on the left. There is the before. And there is after. There's before. And there is after. Let's get it more centered, maybe, so we could see both of the ladies. There is before, and there is after. I think it looks great because they needed varying amounts of sharpness, meaning the woman on the left was a little more out of focus than the woman on the right. Um, so it didn't need equal amounts of sharpening. It needed varying amounts between the two women. And I, I think it did pretty good. There, again, is before, and there's after after we'll zoom back out so that is sharpen ai on people uh unlike soylent green uh is people this is sharpen ai on people uh those of you that like science fiction know what i'm talking about when i say soylent green 
Uh, other than that, let's just leave. Let's go. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>